Hello everyone. Thanks for coming in this Wednesday evening. I am going to sew my hourglass block together tonight, or I'm going to start sewing at least. So I've made all my hourglass blocks. I laid it on the table yesterday and I was going to rearrange it a little bit more, but I kind of liked how it was. So I think all we'll do tonight is a few little tweaks on the design, just making sure that it's, uh, the colors are distributed enough, I suppose. And then we will gather it all together and start sewing. So I'll show you how I organize my rows to get, uh, get started with the sewing. But first we'll take a look at the design and, uh, do some minor tweaks, I think, or, or uh, see if see if we can, yeah, do a few tweaks. So thanks for coming in again tonight, guys. If you're new, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every night, every weeknight at 9.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, thanks again for coming in, guys. And just a reminder, you can win this quilt that I'm making now. I'm... Uh, I made it with some fun fabric that I felt guilty for using, for buying, I guess. Uh, like, I need more fabric. So I bought this fabric, and, you know, to take away the guilt, <laughs> I think I'm going to be giving this away, my, my finished quilt, uh, when I'm done here. So to enter, I have a link in this Facebook description if you would like to sign up to win, and it will be announced in our Penguin and Fish Crafters group. So be sure to check that out on Facebook as well. And actually, I'm going to share this video with that Penguin and Fish Crafters group right now. Uh, I encourage you to share if you want, if there's anyone you know that uh, you want to, that wants to make an hourglass block. This is, uh, I think we're about seven videos into the how-to, just the evenings here that we're, that we're making it. So uh, go check those out to the, the prior videos. They are also on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. So I'm going to flip you guys around and then I will quickly share this with the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. Let me know how you're doing tonight. Let me know what you, uh, what you did today, what you ate for supper or, or whatever fun things you want to tell me. So, all right guys, flip me around. Okay, here it is so far. All right, let me just share quickly, and then I will be there. Oh, so it seems like some people are working. It's working for them again, and some people not. Uh, the replay will definitely work just fine, or it should. And uh, the replay on YouTube will, will work as well. And, you know, it's always like half and half, so I'm not quite sure what the deal is, but hold on, I'm still sharing with uh, the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. And uh, there we go. Okay guys, back to it here. So, uh, here's where we kind of left it yesterday. Uh, I arranged it so I have these little like, kind of squares in. And you know what guys, I might, I might try something here. I have an hourglass, or a uh, wide angle lens on here. There. <laughs> I'll probably take that off, but for, for now, you guys can see a little bit more of the quilt all at once with the little wide-angle lens. So I did put uh, these little diagonal rows of larger squares, so you can see them. And those larger squares just come from uh, taking one of my solid pieces and putting like triangles around it. So just from rotating rotating the blocks a little bit, like here's another one, rotating, rotating these so that um, part of the triangle, oops, so part of the, that triangle is the same color, it, it created kind of these diamonds. So I've placed them throughout the quilt. From far away, you can, you can see them pop up. So here we go, we got one there, 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 they're in kind of little rows, there, there, there. And I think I'm going to keep it like that. I'm, I'm liking that effect. Oh, I know. It's a little bit blurry because I put on that funny lens. I will, I'll move that lens in a sec, guys. I just kind of wanted to show you, show you that. So all I need to do is kind of go through it. And if anything jumps out as weird, like what I don't want to have happen is, like, I don't want, you know, 
a blue, like similar thing is to touch. Uh, I'm going to take the lens off now, guys. There we go. I, I don't want similar things, similar blocks to touch if uh, they are the same color. So I don't want something like that. So I'd want to rotate, rotate it a little bit like so. And you know, sometimes, you know, there's an awful lot of cream in this area. I might want to switch that out, although that's, that's been a little bit uh, harder to do than you think. Uh, actually, let's try and do this. I'm going to move that one here. This area looks like it could use some more white. The trick is whenever you take something away, you affect everything else. So I just put that down here. So I don't know. I think I might rotate this guy a little bit. Oop, can't go that way. How about like that? And we still got our guys in place. So all right. Uh, I think I think I'm gonna just call it at that. Um, I got a green down here. Here's another green square. I think everything is looking okay. Again, I don't want light colors to touch, but I think we got it. Uh, at some point, you just gotta stop, right? So, all right, here is how I organize the blocks. I have my little wonder clips and a little piece of paper here. I am going to number this by rows. So here we go. We got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and then six, seven, eight rows. So I'm just going to try and get, get as wide as I can. I'm going to collect uh, the rows in order, but I'm going to collect the row right now just so you can see. Usually I would go from top to bottom, uh, but one, two, three, four, five. I'll start here, or six. I'll start six just because you guys can see it here. I'm going to stack them on top of each other in order and the correct direction I want it to go. So I'm not, I'm not rotating them or anything. I am just grabbing like so. So if I, if I spread this out, it'd be my row again. And then I'm going to take a wonder clip. I'll just place them right here. And I have some sticky notes. Uh, it's just like a little piece of paper. I'm actually going to tear, tear it up here, put a couple on here. So I'm going to write on here that this is row one, two, three, four, five, six. This is row six. And I'm going to just take that and I'm actually going to stack these on top of each other and I'm going to wonder clip this whole stack together. And you can use uh, like a, a binder clip if you don't have wonder clips or, you know, a safety pin or whatever. So there we go. I'm just going to grab the whole deal. There. This is my row six. So I'm going to just do this with all the rest of the rows. I know that it's in order. Uh, I'm going to always have the, the wonder clip on the left side so I know this is the top and the bottom. Uh, you know, I can help that with, um, you know, my numbers right side up, so that'll help me. How many large area blocks do I have? I have, um, by that you mean, like, these these fun little guys. I uh, have one, two, three. I think this one was three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of them, but some of them are partial. So, all right, so this is row six. I'm going to do that with the rest of these here. And again, usually I would start from the top to the bottom, but, you know, I just did it in a way that you guys could see here. So I'm going to, I'm going to continue downward because these are the ones that I'm going to uh, drop on the floor. So let's grab these. And then I'm going to sew these in order and keep them in order. And... I'm going to actually, while I sew, I'm going to keep that number on there. So I can always, always remember, because we're going to need this once we have to iron them into long rows as well. We're going to need to know what number that is. And we're also going to need to know, because when we press these, 
we're going to press the even numbers, the seam allowance of the even numbers in the one direction, and the seam allowance of the odd numbers in the opposite direction, because then we can nest our seams together later. But we will get to that. Grab another wonder clip. Make sure I got the whole stack. And there we go. So row six and row seven are ready. I'm going to grab row eight from down here, and then I will be able to uh, lean over the table a little bit more. All these guys just want to fall off. And then we did yesterday look at the border color. Uh, we're going to use that, that dark green. It's almost this color green for the border, I think. And I don't know, we'll try some sparkly floss yet, some ideas like that. You know, again, I'm this far with the ideas. We'll figure out the rest as we go. All right, this is eight. You know, we've had some weather here tonight too, guys, so that might be causing some issues too. But you know what? I think it's all just Facebook. I'm not sure any of our weather or anything is causing any problems. I'm gonna keep these in order. So eight, seven, six. So see, now I can just stack them like this and I know, I know what's what. I'm not gonna mix it up. All right, let's do the rest. We actually, uh, last night, did not have power, and the power did not come back on till this morning around 9 a.m. So uh, that was our little drama of yesterday. And this is the worst of it. We were, it, The power conked out within the last six minutes of the last episode of House of Cards. So... <laughs> That was unpleasant. But luckily, this is just how spoiled we are these days. Uh, we were able to watch the rest of it on uh, my husband's phone. Isn't it funny? We would have never even thought of that as a thing back in the day. All right, I might not have, to have enough little pieces of paper. Uh, this was row five. Wonder clip. I'm excited we'll start to sew soon. All right, five. This is four. And like I said, at some point you just have to decide where things go. I'm sure I could have played around with this for hours and hours just to get everything just perfectly evenly distributed. And, um, you know, I don't know, played with a whole different pile of ideas. But sometimes you just have to decide. And once a decision is made, it just, it just feels good. All right, let's see how many more little pieces of paper I can get out of here. This is number four. And there we go, last three rows, and then we can start sewing. Again, I'm making sure that I'm grabbing them in order, the order that I want to sew in. Okay. Uh, I need three more pieces of paper out of here. What's the fun in perfect placement? Yeah, that just gets stressful, right? Everything has to be placed perfectly. Okay, so now I feel like I panicked a little. I want to make sure that I got these in the right spot. I'm just going to have to trust that I got it right. For some reason, I feel like I set this down funny, but I don't, I don't think I did. I think we should be I suppose we can tell if the second one has, the uh, second one needs to have one of these green triangles on at the top. 
And it does. Okay, so we're fine. <laughs> I'm still in the right order. I just panicked. All right, let's. Uh, I'm gonna shimmy these down so I can reach them. And um, we will finish up our our last two rows here. This is row two. Okay. Again, I am jotting down the number on a piece of paper. Row two. I'm gonna get on that left side, like all the other ones. All right, one more row. You're only in season one of House of Cards. I'm not saying anything about anything. For spoilers, Joe, sorry. <laughs> I can't, I can't comment. <laughs> oh man, it's, it's a lot going on in that show though, that's for sure. issue today. I am going to try disconnecting and coming back in. Hey guys, I'm back. So this is try two for this Wednesday. Uh, thanks again for coming in. So where we left off, was I wonder clipped basically, see there's, this is my row number one, I clipped all my rows together so I can keep them all in order. So that's what we have going on here. Uh, I'm gonna share this quick while, while you guys are popping back in. Uh, thanks, thanks again for joining me. I don't know, hopefully, sometimes when we have to go out and come back in, sometimes it works better the next time, but again, it's sort of been half and half uh, with it working for some people and not uh, with others. And I think it's Facebook. I saw that happen earlier to someone today. All right, I'm just sharing this again, guys. So, in a group. I'm sharing this with the, the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. All right, there we go. So let's let's see what we're how we do tonight. Now uh, I'm gonna start actually sewing now. So if you guys are new again, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery. It looks like it's working now better. So awesome. Hopefully I don't get disconnected again. I don't know what the deal is with that. I don't know. It's Facebook Live. <laughs> Who knows? Everything's not perfect yet. But we did, I did manage to go through all my rows and uh, I've clipped them together on the left side. So I know this is the top, the bottom. I know what order to sew these all in and we're going to do that now. So again, this is the quilt. I will be giving this quilt away uh, for free. Uh, you guys can win it. It is um, just a sign up for the link that is with the, this description on Facebook. And if you're watching on YouTube later, then, then it'll be on YouTube as well. And uh, we'll be doing the giveaway after I finish the quilt. And we are getting there, guys. Uh, I think it, we'll have this top done this week, I think, potentially. Well, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, we might have the, the top done Thursday and then maybe borders on Friday already. So that's, uh, we're cruising right, around, right along. Then we'll just, uh, we'll do some simple quilting with it. Uh, maybe play around with some sparkly floss. Haven't thought that far ahead yet, but we will get there. Uh, but now we are ready to sew. Uh, I'll show you, like I said, this is all my rows. There were nine rows. I did it the long way. You know, usually I do, you know, short rows and then more in the column. But uh, tonight, just because of the way it was laid on my table, I did it like the rows of nine and then eight of those rows. So here we go, all my rows, all numbered and ready to go. So now it should be easy 
in theory. All I have to do is stay in order <laughs> and just be aware of, um, like when I undo my wonder clip, like what I'm stitching to what, and we should be, we should be perfectly fine. Um, oh man, I was thinking maybe I should, I'll probably, uh, oh man, I'm trying to think of how I should stitch together to stay in order. I could either do two rows at once because I want to chain stitch. I want to, um, do the first row and the second row kind of trading off. But I think instead, I think I might lay out the entire row one in front of me and then just pick the pieces off of that in order. And I'll show you what I mean. I think that's the plan. So, all right, I am going to flip you guys around and we will do this for real this time. So here we go. Thanks again for joining me. All right, I, while my phone was rejiggering itself, I uh, got my sewing machine out. And here we go. So I'm going to put the other rows away. I'm going to put the Wonder Clips away. Don't need those right now. Isn't this neat? I got this from Ikea. And uh, it screws shut, which it was important because I don't want it to just pop off. It screws shut. But it's got a big old magnet on the back so I can stick it, stick it onto my wall. My little, um, I have a little metal thing on the wall here. So that's my new fun storage for that. But all right, I'm going to lay this completely out. Oops, you guys are a little stuck here in the cords. So this is row one. Again, everything else is put away so I don't get it confused. I am going to lay this out again. And I'll tell you why in a sec. I might have to condense this a little bit. Okay, so let's just I'm going to actually put it in pairs, and then I'll have one extra here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these two together, and then while these are still on the machine, I'm going to sew these two together, and then these two, and then these two, and then I'll have the last one. So what I do need to do is pay attention to the order that they come off of my machine, because that's the order they're going to go into. And oh man. Maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe I should just sew them one at a time so I know which one's which. Oh, and you know what? I also am going to keep this little one on the first, first one. So the trick is I don't want to accidentally flip them around either, so I do have to keep track. Um, I don't know. Let's just get going. I'm going to see. I got I to gotta just make sure to keep track of what's what. And I think we just got to jump in. So here we go. My first two. Uh, remember, it is important that I don't rotate them around and stuff. So I have to pay attention here. Uh, I'm going to get those corners aligned as best I can. And here we go. I'm going to get my little... Uh, Leto to help get it started. You always get yours switched up when you change stitch a whole row. I think putting the pairs back down would make less mistakes. Yeah, that's what I'm a little worried about because I don't think I'll get the pairs messed up, but I'm afraid that I will rotate a pair uh, so it's wrong. Um, you know what I could do, just because I'm scared of that, why don't I put a wonder clip on every single, every single pair? And I know that it'll be on the left side. I'll always put it on the left side, and that's how I'll know that I'm not flipping it around. Okay, that's my new plan. Now I can actually sew all of these at once. I just needed a little bit of a marker, and I think that will... That will do the job. Wonder clip on the left. That's all I need to know. Great, now I can sew all of these without using my brain. That's the problem. Whenever I have to use my brain, uh, then I get messed up. So again, I'm putting the wonder clip on the left side of the left block. And then I'll know when I'm done that it's not it's not like this. It's it'll always be on the left side. 
you can put a little pin there or, or whatever. Okay, and then I have one more. So again, I'm going to put a little wonder clip there. Flip that around and we're ready to sew. All right, I really like this wonder clip idea. I think that's going to help me a ton. Because really, when, when my brain gets involved, then we're in trouble. line that one up too well but that's okay uh, I, so remember we have this on the bias uh, because of the way we originally cut these so uh, I don't want to really be pulling because if I pull on this it's gonna stretch uh, more than what we want it to so okay let's see how we did here I have my first chain I only have this one remainder down here so I'm gonna just snip them off one at a time from the first one to the last, because then I'll know the order. Oh, thanks, Tim. So the, here we go. Here's the test. All right, on the left side, it's going to start coming together. I love this part. When you sew things together, they all of a sudden look finished. All right, so here's my reminder. Left side. OK, this is totally working. Wonder Clip is saving the day. Uh, left side, and at the last one I'll leave on the machine because it is, um, I need to chain stitch it off. So here's what we can do now. Now I will put these two on. So now I don't need, I don't need this wonder clip anymore because now I, these are the first two. So I'm going to put those together. So I'm still going to do the same thing, wonder clip all the way to the left. So now we have these four pieces together. All right, just kind of scratch them into place. And then we'll take this one from the previous stitching off again left the one clip on the left i think that's working awesome so this is our last one and uh take that off and now this is the most this is the most left piece now so that's got the one clip we'll flip and sew so i still do have to remember the order but i'm sewing them in order so the one on the machine now the one in first position will be first. Just got to get this guy started here. He needs a little help along that one. All right, I still do have this little stray one down here, so I have to take care of that yet. So I'm going to I'm going to put an ender on here and snip that off. So here is my first and second Parts. So here we go, it's coming together. This is the second part. And actually before I sew those two together, I'm going to sew that last, my last piece on. So we could have probably been a little bit more efficient uh, so I didn't have to, so I'd get this end piece on a little bit sooner. But my priority right now is keeping things in, in order and I think I think we got a plan for that. So let me get another leader in here for Ender. All right, now I can match up these two. All right, most left side and the most left side. So I'll take that one clip off, flip it around, and this is sewing the row together, the final, final part here. Alright. Just wanted to check to make sure I wasn't missing anything you guys were saying. Alright! That is row one done. 
So let's check it out. Just gonna shimmy you guys over. Okay, so I'm gonna sew them all first before pressing them because I want to press them all at once. But there we go. Uh, and it shrunk up, which is awesome. You know, we're losing a quarter inch with every time every time we sew off of each piece of fabric. So total is about a half inch every single time. So with all these together, we probably lost, uh, you know, a little over four inches, which is pretty crazy to think of. But here we go. I still have my number one on there. Hey, Jane, good morning. Good morning from the UK. All right, so moving on, let's do row number two. I'm gonna just throw that up at the top and uh, you can see how much smaller it is. You know, there's the beginning to the end. But all right, let's, let's lay out row two. Again, I'm not gonna lay out any more rows than that because I don't wanna confuse myself, but let's make sure we reattach on the first block because I wanna keep, keep this notification there. Identification, uh, rather. Okay. So I'm going to put them in pairs again. So one, two, keeping them in order. This is three, four, five, six. God, I'm going to put seven, eight and nine down here. So I'm gonna put one eclipse on the side of the left ones of the pairs. So we're ready to go. And I'm also gonna put one on, even though there's nothing else on here, like it's only a single, I'm gonna put it on there too, just so I remember the orientation. I always know that it's gonna be on the left here. So, all right, let's do it. We'll sew those together again. And you know what? I think I'm going to actually sew, well, you know what? No, we're going to stick in order. I'm just too afraid I'm going to make a mistake if I try and go out of order. So we won't have perfect chain piecing, meaning that uh, I never have to use the leader, this little leader piece or an ender because I was so smart and was able to just continuously sew. Yeah, that's not happening. I'm, I'm erring on the side of knowing for sure what order I'm going in. So this is the one, two unit. Let's do the three, four unit. What a lot of people do is they trade off, like they do the one, two, and then the uh, five, six, and then they can go back to the three, four. Uh, sometimes doing it in weird combinations like that help uh, to do the continuous chain piecing, but like I said, that's too much management for me right now, so we're going to go in order, and if I have to do use a, a leader here or there, that's not going to kill me. All right, here's the 5-6 unit. But yeah, labeling and numbering... You know, don't think you can just remember all this stuff. That's, you need, uh, you need to keep track of it somehow. That's, that's using your brain way too much. And, you know, like, it, all I did was the little one eclipse. And you could use pins and, uh, just making sure to number, number the, the, um, the rows. And, I mean, you wouldn't have to, like, if, if I, uh, you know, I could try and remember everything, and if I mess up, it's not the end of the world. But, you know, you did spend a lot of time um, figuring out, I'm going to put an ender on now, uh, spent a bunch of time getting it in order and moving things around, so you don't want to mess it up now in the sewing stage. You're one of the people who will get confused and have to be over careful. Exactly, Sherry. I mean, you know, this is the part where you want to be over careful, I think. So, all right, I'm going to trim them off again one by one. I'm starting at the first one that I sewed. So I'm not, I'm not just cutting them all. I'm, start, I'm going in order so I can remember. So here's my first one. All right, so this is the next farthest from the machine, meaning I sewed it second. All right, the left goes over there. Laying it out. Here's the third piece I sewed. 
And the fourth piece. And then we have our, our last piece here that we haven't sewn yet. So here we go. It's coming along. So now, like we did the last time, uh, you know what? Th this is where I'm going to switch it up. So I'm going to start with the last one, and um, I'm just going to remember that it's the last one. I'm going to take it off right away. But I'm going to sew that single to, to here. So here's my little three fur, and then I'll go back to the beginning. I'll know this one's different because it has three on where all the other ones will have four, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trim it off right away. Okay, so let's get the one, two, and three, and four. I will remove that wonder clip. How these guys go together? Thanks, Tim. I am having a really fun time. This was totally an experiment for me. I hadn't done hourglass flex before like this, and uh, it's fun. It's fun to just grab some fabric and play, and I think and that's definitely you know how I feel about this project, just playing. All right, now that I have those sewn together, I'm gonna snip off my last one. So remember, this is my three, this was my last, my ender piece. And now I need it because I have to sew that last two piece to it. So let's get the left guy up there. So the, I'm still keeping the leftmost one. We'll sew these two together. And with an ender, then these are our last two pieces again, and uh, we'll have another row done once we sew these together. Alright, get my ender in. Alright, so here's row, or the first, the first bit and the second. So looking cute. Here's a, one of these uh, squares that are starting to happen uh, with the, all the light colors. All right. So again, this is helpful even on these bigger pieces, knowing that this is the most left piece with the wonder clip. All right. Let's flip that around, and we'll sew our second row. This will be it for row number two. Snip that off, and we have row two. Oh, you love this fabric, Michelle. I this is a, the fabric that started uh, my fabric fever at the, at the uh, store. I had to get. I I think I saw. You know what? I think I saw the um, this this cream at the store first with these gold sparkles, and then I noticed there were some other shiny fat quarters there. And then I just opened the spigot. Um, basically, I needed I needed every I needed every shiny fabric <laughs> after that point in the fat quarter bin. So here we are. <laughs> All right, rows one and two. I still have them labeled, so I'll know what order they go in later. Here's that start of a green square, and here's a start of that uh, that like kind of crispy. Uh, winter blue square. So, all right, row three, let's keep going. I think we're starting to get a system down here. Again, I'm going to put this right back in place and pair them up again. So, one and two. Haha, <laughs> we've never done that. I know, it's not that hard to do to get, to get that uh, fabric fever, is it? I'm going to throw a Clip on here right away. Oh, I could feel it building though too. I was so bummed because I was there. I, I managed to hold off the fabric fever the entire time I was at the store. 
until right at the end, and then it just grabbed me, and it, I could feel it build, and I'm like, no, I did such a good job of not buying extra stuff, and then, then I couldn't, I just couldn't stop. <laughs> just so silly. Uh, the fact that I was seeing it happen as it was uh, going was a bummer. See you soon. Thanks for coming in. All right, this one again. This one I don't need to put a wonder, uh, clip on the end because, you know, it's a solid. It'll be the same any which way. So, all right, let's sew our pairs again. That's why we end up with stashes. Exactly, Marion. I, I'm actually, it's starting to... It's starting to itch at me a little bit that I, I want to go through all of my, my fabric, like do a whole big stash assessment, I suppose. So I want to find all of my fabric that's around the house, because it's kind of everywhere, <laughs> and get it all in one place and organize it a little bit better. It, it's been itching at me more and more, and uh, which probably means I'm not going to be able to hold it off for too much longer. One of these weekends, I'm, my house is going to explode with fabric. Oh, <laughs> Michelle, I think this is the first time I've ever bought fabric and used it, like, immediately. So, <laughs> this isn't a common occurrence, me, me using it right away. Not at all. I think I was just too guilty. and I happened to see an hourglass quilt example I think the next day so my fabric was still sitting out when I saw that hourglass quilt and then I'm like oh man I could just do an hourglass quilt super fast and it'll feel good to finish something and I can use up that fabric that I bought uh, with the fever <laughs> so that'll make me feel good that I'm using it up so it's kind of a perfect storm I guess for using using this fabric right away But yeah, not typical. Usually I, uh, like I like I was saying for uh, the Splendid Sampler, that fabric, um, some of that fabric I had for uh, over seven years, and it was on my shelf so I could look at it every day. <laughs> and I just never used it because it was too pretty to use, and I think I'm totally getting over that that concept. I'm, I'm way more open to... Uh, using up my pretty fabric that I've been saving. All right, I gotta, I gotta make sure I pay attention here. Here's the first one. I already have another quilt in mind to do, uh, and I'll have more info on that soon. But I already have fabric picked out for it, and it's some of my fabric. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this on the end right away. It's some of my fabric that same fabric that I've saved for, you know, now probably eight years. Uh, but I'm excited I'm going to use that soon, too. So I think I'm over my whole not using the fabric uh, thing that I had forever. So I feel good about that. Decided to do the Argos because you're still learning. It was simple. Ha helps me practice your points. Exactly. So this is kind of a simple block. It does, you know, there is one thing that if you can get good at this, you'll, um, you'll have a, a better time with certain aspects of the Splendid Sampler. We are sewing on the bias. And what that means, actually this one's not on the bias. So I think you can maybe see on the back a little bit better. So you can see that fabric is woven, you know, horizontally and vertically. If you cut it at a diagonal like this, you know, then you have a triangle, right? But when you cut across something, or not even cut, the angle that's across here at the 45 degree angle is uh, at a 45 degree angle of that uh, those horizontal and verticals and that happens to be a very very stretchy part of the fabric compared to the horizontal and vertical so it will stretch at the um, at a 45 degree angle much more than it'll stretch uh, either horizontally or vertically uh, so when you sew on an angle, so in this case, this is that angle, because this was our original square, and we cut it, so that's at that 45 degree angle. Those can get pretty stretchy. So when I have it through the machine, I don't want to stretch it, because I could stretch this whole thing out into like some crazy, crazy curve, and I don't want that to happen. 
So I just have to be careful that I'm not stretching it a ton. So uh, it is a fun kind of beginnery block, but there is, you know, you still want to pay attention to the stretch a little bit. So I'm going to put this last piece on of my, uh, my end piece again, like I did last time. And then we will start sewing our uh, little pairs again. So here's my one piece, one two piece, and my three four piece. I'm gonna remove that clip, flip it over. I know some of these greens. I, oh yeah, I think that's you know I was just gonna say that's my favorite, but then I look at another one and, and that's my favorite. But I really really do love that green, that kind of uh, this this green right here. So pretty and sparkly. I've never sewn with shiny or sparkly fabric before. I don't think I've ever purchased it before either. So it's a little treat for me. Makes me smile whenever I am touching it or, or sewing it. And that's what fabric should do, right? Make you happy whenever you play with it. So, all right, here are my last two. I think we'll finish this row and then uh, we'll call it a night. So tomorrow we will probably pretty easily finish up the rest of these rows and then maybe we can press them. That would be nice to get done tomorrow as well. Pressing is important for, for this part because we want the even rows, the seam allowances to be pressed in the opposite direction of the of the odd rows because then the rows will sandwich together the uh, the seams, which will give us better points. So that's that's kind of what we're shooting for. So pressing direction is important coming up. But we got a pile more rows. Yeah, we got six more rows after this. Wait, nope, we got eight total rows. Uh, so we have um, five more left for tomorrow. But hopefully we don't cut out tomorrow and we're, we work right away and we can get to it. So we'll, uh, we'll sew and press. And then I think uh, Friday we'll be able to sew all this together and maybe even work on the, I'm going to show you guys this, maybe even be able to work on the border a little bit. So. Maybe not quite as far as I said earlier, but still. All right, there we go. It's starting to come together. So here you can see it's going to be kind of stretched out, kind of almost like an oblong uh, square or diamond now. That's because we haven't gotten rid of these seam allowances yet. So this is the right the right size here. And when we, when we sew the rows together, we will have that perfect square in the middle. So we have one here and one here, and I think this is actually the start of the next one, this kind of uh, crazy velvety whatever fabric. All right, so our rows are ready to go. I, you know, I should be able to set this away for months and be able to come back and know exactly where to start off because we've labeled it and uh, we should just be good to go. So awesome, uh, three rows done, five to go guys. All right, I'm gonna flip you around and we will call. I'll show you guys one of these rows up close. Oh, thanks, Christine. Thanks, Judith. Oop, there we go. <laughs> Bit of the ceiling there. So here we are. This is row three. I know that this is on the left, so it'll always stay in order. It is coming together. Look at all those fun, crazy fabrics. I'm excited. This, uh, this, for quilt land lately, uh, you know, I've been in the splendid sampler world and, you know, doing a fast quilt like this is really refreshing. I'm, I'm totally digging it. Uh, and again, if you guys are working on it, I know some of you are sharing, but if you're working on it, uh, please feel free to post it in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. Uh, you can join just, uh, I think I have a link in the, in the description here for that group and uh, come chat with us. I'm excited to be working on this. And again, I'm giving it away when I'm finished and um, I haven't done something like that before. So be sure to sign up for that. 
as well for the drawing. Uh, again, link is within here. So awesome, guys. I will be back here tomorrow at 9.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, that's, uh, you guys probably all know what it is now, but it, it's, uh, what is it, 7.30 uh, Pacific Time and 11.30 uh, Eastern. So awesome. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you guys joining me every night here. And I will catch you tomorrow. Have a great evening.